In this tutorial, you will learn how to design a notepad in Photoshop. First of all, let's open the canvas and set the dimensions. For a notepad, the width should be of 6 inches and the height should be of 8 inches. For now, let's keep the background white. Now let's select a new layer, pick up the elliptical marquee tool, make a circular selection, and fill the color. For now, let's fill the selection with a shade of yellow. Now let's make three more circles on a separate layer with the same elliptical marquee tool and fill them with different colors. With that done, let's open up the layer style options. First of all, we will set the outer glow options. First, let's set the color to 74D41F. With that done, let's change the opacity to 97%, spread to 211%, and size to 10 pixels. With that done, let's move over to the inner glow tab. Over here, let's use 63F336 for the fill. With that done, let's set the choke to 6%, size to 24 pixels, and opacity to 82%. With that done, let's move over to the drop shadow tab. Over here, we will set the spread to 4 pixels and size to 8 pixels. Now let's choose a color for the drop shadow fill. Over here, we will be using the value 45DF30 for the fill. You can go ahead and use the same settings for the other circles. Make sure to use different colors and values for different circles, since the, all of the circles are of different sizes. For example, in the red circle, we chose the color pound sign FB75DD for outer glow, inner glow, and drop shadow. Similarly, in the green circle, we chose pound sign EE8F15. And in the purple circle, we chose pound sign 6FCCF3. Now we will add parallel lines to our design. For that, select the Rectangle Marquee tool and drag it vertically. Fill the color with blue. Copy the same layer and let's change the color of the duplicated layer. For example, over here, give it a green color. And that's basically it for a simple notepad design. Remember, you should pay attention to the dimensions to be used. Over here, we will simply add the company name, duplicate the circles, and position on the canvas accordingly. The overall output should be something similar to this. And that's it.